Good morning, YouTube. Good morning, everybody. This is an interactive live stream here on YouTube on the Stony Ridge Farm channel. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, this is the Stony Ridge Farm. We are on a 200 acre farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. Uh, this is uh, Friday. It is a live stream and I wanted to talk to you guys a little bit. We're just going to kind of dive right into this. I wanted to talk to you guys. I had an email from a, a young man who is dreaming of starting a farm and he's dreaming of growing a farm and, and he's in high school or just out of high school and we'll call him Matt and we'll say that Matt um, and I told him I was going to do a video about this and, and we'll say that Matt uh, is is seriously dreaming about living that farm life and, and growing his family and living the country dream and buying land and, and, and having a successful life as a farmer, as a first generation farmer. And I'm here to tell you, and I'm not here to break your heart, but I'm here to tell you some of the facts that, that I've lived through. And I just emailed him this email, and I think it's something that we all need to understand is it's the food system in the United States and the food system here is cheap food okay so let's talk first of all about rural lifestyle and about folks that live in the country uh, that that where I live here in North Carolina and and where a lot of folks live in the, in rural areas we don't have access to grocery stores that have all of the organic vegetables, the uh, the fancy foods that, that a lot of folks that live in the city, in the larger cities, so where we live in North Carolina, like a larger city, maybe Raleigh, Charlotte, or Greensboro, something like that, um, or Asheville. Um, I'm going to move this light just a little bit over so it's not blinding me. There we go. And this light, too. I'm getting blinded a little bit here. Um, it's good to have good light, but it's not good to have it blinding you. <laughs> there we go. So what you don't have access to living in the country is good food. I mean, honestly. And what you don't have access to also living in the country is money and really good jobs. Because the big jobs, the good jobs, the, the jobs that provide people with incomes that are, uh, that get you into the upper middle class to where you can afford to go buy organic vegetables uh, at the grocery store, which are a huge, huge markup. Those are too expensive for folks that live in the country to purchase. I mean, they're just too expensive. And when, what I found out when I moved, we moved, so I grew up in the country, I grew up on a farm. Um, a different kind of farm. Uh, we grew up, we raised our own vegetables. We had a you pick it kind of situation when I was growing up. We had about a five acre garden and as children we walked around behind the wagon and picked up rocks and picked up taters and and we had folks come down and it was a different world back then. I'm 40 years old. I can remember being five, six, seven, eight years old and folks would come down. They would park in the yard in our orchard and they would come through and they would pick vegetables in our garden and mom and dad, dad went to work and mom managed the garden in the summertime and we sold ham, we sold country ham, we sold sausage from our hogs that we raised. We always raised four hogs a year. We had goats, we had pigs, we had chickens, we sold eggs, we sold vegetables. And we used that money back in those days in the 80s, in the 1980s, to provide the money that it took to raise our family. But you can't do that nowadays. We don't, we can't do that nowadays. It's a different world. Food is cheaper. Food has been taken to the point so that it's so cheap and you can go to McDonald's and buy a cheeseburger. Back then you couldn't go to McDonald's and just buy a cheeseburger for 99 cents or $1.29. People don't put that work into it and they don't appreciate food like they used to. Which brings me to the point here. So the email that I sent to this young man, um, and he wants to start a farm, and he's mentioning to me, this is my editing setup here. This is my office in the back of our house. Um, he basically said, I want to start a farm. What piece of advice do you have for me? And the first piece of advice that I had for him was invest in yourself. Please invest in yourself. 
make make a huge investment in yourself. I'm sorry about this autofocus. This is a Samsung camera, and I will never ever buy another Samsung phone because of this stupid autofocus. It won't stop autofocusing on me. I uh, I told him make an investment in yourself. The biggest thing you can do is make an investment in yourself. If you want to start a farm, if you want to start this, start it as a hobby. Make it something fun. Don't make it your livelihood. Don't make it something that you're going to have to depend on because it's not going to be immediately sustainable income. Now, that brings me to the email that I just sent him. And I'm going to kind of read this out to you. I'm going to move the camera closer and maybe that'll stop this ridiculous autofocus issue. You see that posted on the wall back there? <laughs> That's been there for a year and a half. <laughs> That's where I want to put a shelf. So maybe the autofocus will stop. So I'm going to read this email to you and it, it makes a lot of sense. So he asked me, what advice and what help have you gotten from old timer type farmers, from your local people, from local people that have been farming for years, what type of advice have you gotten from those folks? And my basic answer to him was I've gotten no advice from him because any farmer that's local that has found a way to make money is not trying to tell you the way he's making money because he's been struggling all of his life to make some money. Sunny Slope Homestead, the neighbor has stopped with the signs. Thank you for asking. I appreciate it. The neighbor has stopped with the signs. This is totally... Um, not about that so what's going on he asked me a question about the old-timer farmers so what I what I replied to him I said look man the old-timer farmers just just to keep things in mind the practical minded old-timer farmer has been working his butt off for years and years and years and honestly here on our farm right now we're just mowing hay we don't have fences up we don't have things going on like that right now it takes years to build a farm, it takes years to build buildings, it takes years to start a first generation farm, and it takes money. It just takes money. We have to throw money out. You can't raise cows in the woods. And I know folks are thinking, oh, well, you can do silvopasture, and you know, you can raise grass in the woods, and guys, silvopasture is a wonderful, wonderful thing. Dude. I keep seeing the same comment over and over. <laughs> Silver pasture is a wonderful thing. Growing, growing grass in the woods, super awesome. That's a, that's a great idea. But grass doesn't really grow in the woods. It takes a certain acidity for the grass to grow. So you've got to think about these things. Grass doesn't grow in the shade. Grass grows in the sun. So you, you're not going to raise. You're not going to have a successful crop of a hundred acres and think that you're going to raise 50 cattle on 100 acres of forest. You're not going to do it. You're just not going to do it. So, and have healthy animals. You're not going to do it. So, let's talk a little bit about here. Farming in a conventional manner. Um, on our farm, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be fencing an area, a huge area. I live in the country. I lost you there for a second. So, let's talk about what you got to do. You got to find that niche, that little niche that nobody else has to make a profit. You got to start small. You've got to find that niche. And this is the example that I gave him. I just told him, I said, man, the problem is the old timer farmers are doing it different than new farmers and things are different. Food is different. The demand for food is different. The food that people want is different. The reason people are failing is because food is cheap. True country people are not wealthy folks. So what you've got to do is make a product and you've got to ship a product. You have to move a product. Thank you, SLC Farms, for the super chat. You have to move a product. So you take that product and you move that product from your farm to the city, which could be 35, 45 minutes down the road. You have refrigeration costs. So we kind of go, go into that a little bit and I'm going to go into that here. So. What I said is wealthy folks don't have time to drive to the farm to buy their food because they can go to a grocery store and buy all their food and spend just a little bit more money and have access to everything that they want. If you're wholesaling your food to a grocery store, you're losing money. If you're wholesaling your food from the farm 
to a restaurant, you're losing money. You're just losing money. If you're retailing your food, then you're having to move it. You're having to refrigerate it. You look at folks like Our Wyoming Life who are growing a garden three and a half months out of the year and they're running a farmer's market and they're working their butts off. They're selling vegetables, they're selling eggs, they're working so hard and they want to make a profit. They also have a over 5,000 acre ranch. They're working so hard to make a profit on that ranch and the infrastructure was already there for them. We're talking infrastructure here. We're talking a first generation farm to start a first generation farm. So here we go. Why would Joe Schmo come out to your farm to buy your beef from you? Why would he come to your refrigerated truck and buy your beef from you? Why would Joe Schmo do that? Why would he get in his car when he can go to the grocery store and buy his beef from you? Why would he do that? Because he can buy 100 pounds of beef from you at a discounted price and he knows it's grass-fed beef, it's the best beef, he knows where it came from, what farm it came from. I've got an audience of 200,000 people here on YouTube and I can't sell beef and make money with it in a retail environment. I cannot do it. There's no way that I can buy a refrigerated truck or have a cooler, a walk-in cooler and a processing situation to sell beef to the public and make money. I can't do it. There's no way I can do it. I cannot compete. If you can go buy organic beef at your local grocery store or your local Walmart or wherever, one pound at a time, two pounds at a time, why would you buy 100 pounds of beef at a time and have to buy a $400, $500 deep freezer and keep that thing running, then go out there and find out that your kids didn't close the door to the deep freezer and 100 pounds of meat has rotted and ran out in the floor or you had a power outage and you worried about that the whole time the power was out. Why would you do that when you could just go and access it at the grocery store? Why would Joe Schmo come to your farm to buy your beef? That's what I'm saying. The only value in it is buying in bulk the value in buying in bulk is being, you've got to store it at your home. So Joe Schmo that buys your beef has to store it at home. It fails. It just fails. So secondly, let's talk about that. What I'm getting at here is that it's a tough, tough market. Farming is a tough, tough market. Food is a tough, tough market. Can you think of anything more competitive? Everybody has to eat. Everybody doesn't have to buy this t-shirt, but everybody has to eat. So I told him again in this email, and this again is a reply to a gentleman's email that wants to start a farm and the advice that I had to get him. So I told him I couldn't make money selling eggs, beef, or chicken. I've worked out the margins on my meat birds. So we do meat birds here on the farm. If I wanted to make $3 per bird on my meat birds, I would have to sell those birds and they're pastured poultry. I mean, they're good birds. And if you go to Polyface Farm up in Swope, Virginia, you're going to pay a premium price for these birds. I would have to sell them for $23 per bird in order to make $3 each. That's $150 profit over nine weeks of dragging coops around. Say if I had 10 coops, well, there's $1,500 of profit over nine weeks of dragging coops around. Say I had an employee that came and helped me on the farm and I had to pay that employee 10, a fair wage, 10, $13 an hour, something like that. As a farmhand, 10 to $13 an hour around here is a very fair wage, very, very fair wage. $13 an hour is way more than any farmhand around here would make. So at that point, I can't live off $1,500 over nine weeks. There's no way here. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Uh, for leaving that comment there. I hope you guys are appreciating this little teaching moment. So once again, let's say, so I sell eggs and I make one dollar per dozen. Well the egg carton cost me somewhere between 50 cents to one dollar per carton just for the paper carton to put the eggs in and the label that goes on it that says Stony Ridge Farm. So you've got beautiful delicious pasture raised Stony Ridge Farm eggs in each carton of eggs uh, I'm going to make one dollar on. So the food for the chickens, it costs me conservatively $30 per day. Now I'm going to have to feed these chickens. I'm going to have to supplement these chickens $30 per day. 
The mobile coop is going to cost me somewhere in the neighborhood of $3,000 to build. Now a fox gets in the hen house and he kills 10 birds per night until I can get a hold of the situation. Okay, so I'm losing birds. For the sake of simplicity, I've got 1,200 birds. That's 100 dozen eggs per day, plus or minus 10 dozen. So that's $90 per day profit. That's that plus or minus 10. $90 per day, that's $2,700 per month. Stick with me on the math. So I've got 1,000 chickens laying eggs. I mean 1,200 chickens laying eggs. And we're going to call that 90 dozen eggs. So I'm making $90 a day and I'm raising 1,200 birds out on pasture in a $3,000 mobile coop that I built myself, of course. And we're moving in every day. That's labor. We're gathering up the eggs. We have fuel costs. We've got tires. We've got refrigeration. We've got the guy we're paying $12 an hour for $5 for five hours a day to pick up the eggs, to wash them, to put them in the cartons, and to ship them out to wherever they go to get the eggs out. Because people aren't going to come. I'm not going to sell. I'm, I'm not going to sell a hundred dozen eggs on my farm per day. I'm not going to do it. There's no way. We're not close enough to a big city. So we've got to truck them. We're going to have to move them. So at the end of it, per day, after five hours, labor alone, we make $1,800 per month on the chickens. That's it. So $1,500 over nine weeks for meat birds. If I had 10 coops of meat birds, that would be 500 birds. So I'd make $1,500 over nine weeks and I'd make $1,800 a month with egg layers. If I'm moving them around here on the farm and I've got 1,200 birds. Do you get the math here? What I'm trying to tell this guy is if you're going to do this, it's going to have to start small. It's going to have to be and, and use profitable gear in someone else's land. Oh, we're not even talking about land cost yet. We haven't, we haven't gotten into land cost. We're talking about everything's free. The land's free. We're not talking about the fertilizer. We're not talking about the grass seed. We're not talking about any of that yet. We haven't got into any, any of those expenses yet. The land cost, the taxes, the truck. No, we haven't got into any of those costs yet, so we're going to get into that. This is why a first-generation farm doesn't make it. This is why the mega farm and the cheap food in this country... Let me get my coffee before I start ranting here. This is why the mega food and the cheap food, the mega farm, is successful and the small guy cannot survive because food is cheap. Food is cheap. Food is not a priority in this country. Are you selling the farm, says Benjamin Judd. No, I'm not selling the farm because we're going to get to that. We're going to get to what's going on. So, at the end of this video, I'm going to make a little, uh, we're going to talk a little bit here. 999 Super Chat. Guys, I'm not shouting out your Super Chats right now. I'm going to talk about this real quick. And at the end of the video, we're going to do a little discussion, okay? So again, and this is not going to be a substitute for tonight's video. I'm going to get out and work on the willies. It's getting ready to start raining out here, and I don't know if I'll be able to get out and work on the willies Jeep, but we'll talk about that in a minute. This is all about food. So once again, let's diversify. So let's talk about farming. Let's diversify. On my YouTube channel here, I bought some land. I bought three parcels of land, four parcels total now. We just clean one up and we're going to sell it. We're going to flip it and we're going to make some money. And that's what we're going to do. You know why? Because if I'm going to be successful at what I do in my life, I'm going to have to make money and I'm going to have to diversify. I'm a registered nurse. I'm starting a farm. I'm buying land. I had rental property. We sold all of our rental property. When I was 21 years old, I started buying houses. I was 23 years old and I owned seven houses back in 2000 and three, I do believe. I'm, I, I like to hustle. I like to work. I like to grow and I like to dream. And that's how I do it. And that's how life is. And that's how you diversify. And you don't, I just don't live the way that other people live. I don't, I don't go punch a clock and go home. I'm not satisfied with that in my life. And a lot of people aren't. A lot of people are. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that whatsoever. 
go get that 401k, build it up. I've got a 401k and I'm building it up too. And I'm trying to build a beautiful, wonderful farm. So here's what I'm getting at. Back to why we're not making money. So let's diversify the farm. Let's talk. Let's diversify the farm. This is building a farm. You and I, we're all building a farm together here. Let's diversify our first generation farm. So I've got 50 acres and we're talking about the farm out here. This is a hypothetical farm, but this is our farm. Let's talk about it. So I've got 50 acres in cattle and 50 acres in hay. Okay. Now this is first generation farm. This isn't counting the the cost of the land, the taxes on the land, clearing the land, grass seed, fertilizer, manure, whatever we use to get the grass growing. We're not talking about any of that. We're just talking about 50 acres of hay here and 50 acres of cows here. And then we'll reverse it and do 50 and 50. So I've got $50,000 in farm equipment to cut the hay with. All right. So there's 50 grand. And that will help to feed the cows also. So I've got to pick up the hay bales and I've got to feed the cows. I've got fencing cost. So I've got to fence this land. I've got to fence both 50 acre sections, right? So let's realistically suggest what farm fencing cost. What does it cost to fence a farm with gates, with cross fencing? Let's realistically say that it costs somewhere in the neighborhood of $6 per linear foot. Well, how many linear feet are in six miles? How many linear feet? 31,680 feet of fence. That's how many linear feet. How much hay could you buy with $50,000? How much hay could you move with 50,000? I mean, you can't move hay without a tractor. You can't feed hay without a tractor. Again, these are good questions, guys. So we're talking about fence, 31,680 feet of fence to fence in the 250 acre plots. All right, we're not talking about selling hay, we're just talking about feeding the cows. If you buy your hay, you're still losing. You still gotta unload the hay off the trailer. You still gotta do that. The expense of the hay is only the baler, the rake, the tetter, and and that's it. So that's the expense of the hay and the, and the uh, hay spike to, to pick it up with, the cutter, uh, we paid $6,000 for all of our hay cutting equipment. That's how much we paid for all of it. There's a video out there. If I think about it, I'll go back and I'll try and post a link right here to the to the hay cutting equipment, which was an adventure going to buy, but we bought all of our stuff used. So you, we're looking, everybody in the, in the uh, chat here is looking for a reason why this is going to be profitable, but it's not. Okay, let's work out math again. So 31,680 feet, this is the email, I printed it off. 31,680 feet of fence is $190,000, $190,080 in fencing alone. That's with gates, that's with everything, that is a rough estimate of $6 per linear foot, building fences, including gates, everything, okay? Now, we gotta buy cows. Right? So we got math. We got more math to do. We got $800 per cow. Right? Let's say it's $800 per cow. Say we buy some young, breedable female cows. We got young, breedable female cows. They're $800 a cow, which is an unrealistic price. They're probably going to be anywhere from $1,000 to $1,500 and up. Let's we'll say we buy $800. We buy 40 brood cows. Um, and we buy two bulls. Okay? So I haven't even figured in the price of the cows yet here. So let's do that. Let's do 40 brood cows, 40, just realistically, uh, a low price times 800 plus. We've got $32,200 in our cows on top of $190,000 in our fencing, okay? So, so you're breeding your cows. So you were on your first year here and you've already got, uh, well, 200 and, yeah. So you've got $280,000 into this because you forgot, man, you've got to build a barn, right? So you got to store your hay. So you got to buy your tractor. you got to buy your hay equipment. You've got to build a barn to store your hay. Well, you can't store your tractor in the same barn that you store your hay because how many hay barns have gone up in flames because they bailed the hay too wet, it fermented, it caught on fire, and burnt the barn to the ground. So you don't store your hay and your livestock or your hay and your equipment in the same barn. So you've got a barn for your hay, 
and let's say you do a cheap carport shed. So you got a carport shed for your barn, for your hay, and you got a carport shed for your tractor. All right, let's talk about that. Barn versus wrap versus hay wrap. Okay, well, let's talk about spending $25,000 on a new hay baler and wrapper. Okay, so there's more expense. Let's talk about that. What I'm getting at is, holy cow, man, the expenses totally outweigh what you're getting at. So you're doing this, you're starting a farm as a lifestyle. Black Angus is $1,000 to $2,000 a head. Exactly, exactly. So more math here. So you got 40 feeder calves. So you breed your cows and your bulls are doing good. Everybody's healthy. You only got $300 worth of vet bills per year. That's super duper awesome. Equipment cost is about $3,000 per year. Equipment maintenance and, and fuel, let's, let's conservatively say $3,000 per year. Uh, and let's also, let's, let's add another thousand dollars per year for just miscellaneous stuff here. Let's not forget the barn to store the hay. Okay. So the barns, the two barns put together, let's realistically say you've spent another $50,000 in barns for sick cows, barns to take care of those mothers that abandon their calves and all the accoutrements that go along with taking care of baby cows so you got all that okay now you need to haul your hay don't you you gotta haul your hay because your 50 acres is over here and this 50 acres is over here so you're gonna have to move your hay barn is gonna be in one spot it's not gonna be in both places so you got a fence around the hay barn so the cows can't get into the hay barn right okay so that adds a little bit more fencing well you gotta have a trailer to haul your hay on what are you gonna pull it with well you gotta have a truck well, how are you gonna get your cows to the stockyard well, you got to buy a truck. You got to buy a trailer with the truck. How much is a new one ton or three quarter ton pickup? How much is a used one? How much is a good used three quarter ton pickup to haul your cows back and forth to the stockyard, which is two and a half hours away? So you got a five hour round trip drive. The stock trailer costs $25,000 in the pickup truck. Let's say you buy a used one that's 15 years old. You've got eighty thousand dollars in your truck and trailer and all of your hauling apparatus because you've got a flatbed trailer you've got to haul your hay on and you've got a stock trailer that you got to be able to haul 10 or 15 cows well man you can't haul but 10 or 15 cows so you got to make three runs to the stockyard that day because the sale is tomorrow holy cow so in doing this math here guys and this is the email that i sent to this young man in running a hundred acre operation with your chickens, with your cows, it will take you nearly 13 years to start a first generation farm and start profiting. It's a lifestyle. That's what it is. That's what you're seeking. You're seeking a lifestyle. The first thing you need to do, and that's what I'm advising this young man, is to make an investment in yourself because the investment in yourself is what you need to enjoy the lifestyle of the farm right now I've got an excavator and a track loader and he's out there working right now on the farm for me it's a hundred bucks an hour he's clearing more pasture we're trying to get ready for building fences we have a huge fence project we're building five miles of fence it's a huge deal it's a very huge deal I just want to have this discussion with you. Why first generation farms don't make it and the dream of owning a farm and the dream of starting a farm. We're not Minnesota millennial farmer. We're not farming thousands of acres. We're not one lonely farmer. We're not, we're a first generation farm and we want to provide pastured poultry. We want to provide uh, organic pastured eggs. We want grass fed beef, but we're going to have to start it small and it's a huge, huge investment in order to get where we want to be. First of all, we want to take you guys with us and we want to build a beautiful farm and we want to show you the, tr the struggles, the triumphs and what we go through and we want to work through math just like this and give you the reality behind starting a first generation farm and I hope you guys can really appreciate it. Bill Smith, hopefully the fencing will go up in June. We've been working with Tornado Wire. We flew over to the UK, toured the factory. Um, 
Benjamin Judd, I'm not going to tell you how much I make from the YouTube channel, but if I didn't make a little bit of money from the YouTube channel, we wouldn't be able to do this. That's just, it's just that simple. I would not, I, I would not be able to spend the time that it takes to sit in here and, and edit video if we didn't make a little bit of money on the YouTube channel. This is probably the first time I've ever talked about it on YouTube, but this and all of it builds in together in diversifying the farm, and that's it. That's the bottom line, and that's honesty, and that's what's going on here. So we're buying land. We're going to build a house. We're going to build a shop. We're building a Willys Jeep. We're having fun. We're enjoying it. I'm taking you along on the journey. I'm giving you facts. I'm giving you fun. I hope you're enjoying the channel. I hope you're learning from this. And I want to give pieces of advice to young people who want to start a farm. Please make that investment in yourself first. If you don't know what you want to do, go in the military. Go in the military. I mean, try try it. I did not know what I wanted to do as a young man. I went in the Air Force. I signed up when I was 17 and a half years old. I went, signed up, jumped on a plane, flew down to Texas. Never been to Texas before. Never been on a plane before. A country boy went down there and learned how to be an electrician in the Air Force. Got out, used my GI Bill, went back to college, got my four-year degree in eight long years, <laughs> and that's it. So, it's good stuff. What is this? I'm not ignoring you, true alpha noob, okay? I'm trying to start. What are you saying, dude? All right, it's question time, and I'm not ignoring you. I'm talking, okay? So, how do we go about buying land in North Carolina? What do you want me to say, man? Look for land. Go look at it, and call farm credit and try and buy land that's what you need to do <laughs> so so if you don't tell your business you would lose like two viewers the majority of us don't care about your money we just trying to do what you do by learning from you amen amen brother absolutely amen and I hope that that's what you're doing. And I hope we're all learning from each other. And I think we all stand to learn from each other. Would you say that YouTube deflects from your farm business? No, I would say that YouTube helps. I would say that I'm just like you. When I want to know something, the first place I go is YouTube. When I want to learn how to build something, something and I want some ideas so like when we built our chicken coop when I wanted to learn how to build a chicken coop I went on YouTube and I looked at ideas that other people had and I said man I could improve upon this I could do this I could do this I could do that I want to access my eggs from the outside of the coop instead of going in and stepping in poop so I do just like you let's see here Four hundred and thirty-seven people in here, guys. Let's pound some like buttons here if you can. I'm gonna get in here. Thank you for mentioning Farm Credit. Farm Credit's good people. Very good people. They were here this week. Very very nice. Um, what color am I painting the Jeep? You see this Jeep in the background right here? I'm considering that desert tan color, but I'm not real real sure. I don't want it black because black is so hard to keep clean. What will you do with your current house once a new one is built? This will most likely become a farm stay. So um, once we get the farm operation up and going, which we do plan, I mean, we're on a like a five-year program here. Once we get our permanent home built, this will probably be like a tenant farmer's type house or we'll use it as a rental. I don't really want to use it as a rental. I would like it to be a farm stay place where people could come and stay and enjoy the farm and just get a little peace and quiet which would be pretty awesome all right let me scroll down here I've raised white homing pigeons would you consider flying pigeons in your big sky I don't I don't know what that really entails buddy I don't do you get soil sampling done? Says Clark. Clark, yes, yes, we sent soil samples off. 
uh, pH is like 4.2. Organic material here was like 0.03%, which is horrible, horrible, horrible. There's no topsoil left here, and we're building topsoil. They say it takes one year, I mean, what is it, 100 years to build one inch of topsoil. Greetings from North Korea. Hello, North Korea. Woo! <laughs> Eli Dorsey. So this is the interactive portion, guys. If uh, if you're watching this after the fact, this is when I'm interacting with everybody here on the channel. I've done live streams all week this week. Clark Carroll, thank you for the super chat. And thank all you guys that have given super chats during this uh, monologue that I've went through. Thank you all so very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. This is 35 minutes. I've done live streams all week this year. I want... All week this year. <laughs> All week this week. I've done a live stream almost every day. What do you guys think about that? Do you guys like those live streams every day like that? I think it's good. I think it's a good update on what's going on. Uh, I like the teaching videos. I like to tell you what's going on. But I've been so busy rocking and rolling, man, that I just, I've gotten out and filming it. I've gotten out and filmed everything that's going on. But I just don't have time to sit down in front of a computer because I'm out from daylight till dark I get in I answer a few emails I've got phone calls to make and then I rock and roll did I get a flat on the vent track yet no that thing has got tires it's got some kind of sealant in there it's like mud dude so it'll you'll poke a hole in that tire and it'll it'll just fill it right in I'm not sure exactly what it is it may be that stuff one lonely farmer uses not real sure catch you later out there on the batwing mower Larry Mixer so Guys, we're going to be picking up a batwing mower that is a project, a project. Um, that's coming soon. I just purchased 15 acres in eastern North Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. The, he says the channel is very inspirational. That's awesome. You can always make books yourself. Yeah, we're thinking about writing some ebooks. Do I still work at the hospital? This is a very important subject for everyone. So, I, since, we, well, let's talk. Three years ago... I went what's called PRN at the hospital. So PRN means you work as needed. You're the as needed nurse. You get a phone call, hey, we need you this today, we need you two days next week, blah, 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 blah. And I would go in and work. Sometimes it would be a full time, sometimes it would be more than full time. You get a premium pay um, for not having guaranteed hours and that's how I've worked for, I guess, maybe the last six years. So I've always been PRN at the hospital. Okay. Do you get a cash bonus when they really need you? Hospitals sometimes will offer a bonus, but normally for PRN people, they don't give you that bonus because you make a, a I guess they call it a premium pay. So you can always make moonshine. Nah, in <laughs> a fast car. Yeah, I've got the Grand National and the big old trunk, but nah, I'd rather make YouTube videos. <laughs> Uh, back here, sitting on top of this speaker, is a poker chip set that I won. There's two poker chip sets back there. I got one for my buddy for Christmas. This is a Marlboro poker chip set that I won about 20 years ago from a friend of mine in a poker game. He ran out of money, and it was his chip set, so I bet him the, uh, I like to play cards, so I bet him the poker I bet him the poker chip set. I was like, all right, if you're out of money, let's play for the poker chips. <laughs> and, and I won it from him. And last year, I bought him, uh, I went on eBay, and I found the same poker chip set, brand new, still in the wrapper, still in the box. And I bought two of them and was going to give him the best one, whichever one was the best, uh, brand new, still in the wrapper for Christmas, and I gave it to him for Christmas. Um, He's, he was like, how'd you get the wrappers back on there, man? <laughs> I was like, nah, dude. I didn't do that. I didn't wrap them back up. So. Anyway, any more questions? You guys have any more questions? CNA for 18 years. Man, that's a tough job, buddy. I was a, I was a nurse's assistant CNA for quite a while. How about cows? When and where and how? Fences first. Fences will be going up hopefully in June. Working with Tornado Wire. Guys, go on TornadoWire.com. Check out all their cool products. It's pretty cool stuff. We'll be working with Farm Fence Solutions. They also have a YouTube channel. They got a pretty cool video of uh, Luke. Luke will be here. And he's taking a skid loader and pushing down <laughs> a fence from like 12 feet in the air and pushing it all the way down. 
cool stuff. I sell eggs from about 100 chickens and birds. I... What is this? <laughs> Do you think a goat would be worth it to get into it? I don't know. What are you going to do? Are you going to milk the goat? Just depends on what you want to do with your time, to be honest with you. What do you think about the USDA Vets to Farmers program? Um, I don't have a lot of experience with it. Most of my experience over at the USDA office um, has been, here's a brochure, check it out. Now I am talking with some guys down at Fort Bragg and we're going to take a trip down to Fort Bragg. If you're if you're with us on the channel a whole lot, we're going to be taking a trip down to Fort Bragg. I've got three people. We'll probably spend a couple days down there. Uh, Fort Bragg is in Fayetteville, North Carolina, which is probably an hour and 50 minutes, two hours away, something like that. We'll be going down there and I've, I've got, I didn't want to do this, a spoiler alert. So the guys down there are huge fans of the channel. They've been following the Willis Jeep build or Willie's Jeep, however you want to say it. And uh, they want to give me a tour. The reserve unit there wants to give me a tour of the motor pool and show me all the cool vehicles that they're worked on, that they're working on down there in the motor pool. So that is uh, what's going on in the future. Now there's also, I've got an email here from some of the guys that work down there. And there's a program that a gentleman has started down at Fort Bragg to uh, help veterans transition over into farming. And it's a really cool program to help them learn how to transition and all the benefits that veterans can get. And I really should take the course because I, I've, I've found no government benefits that, that have helped me whatsoever. There's no government assistance here on the farm other than just a man trying to run a business and do his taxes. I mean, that's, that's pretty much it. What's your favorite vehicle on the farm? The most utilized and used vehicle is the John Deere Gator on the farm. My favorite vehicle on the farm for truck is my Cummins Diesel, my Unicorn Dodge Ram, and my favorite uh, car is my uh, Grand National. I don't think we'll ever get rid of that Grand National unless something crazy happens. So, Guys, we're going to boogie on out of here. i got to edit a video. Hopefully I can get that up today. There most likely will not be a Willie's Jeep video today unless this rain holds off. If it does, I'll try and get out there and work on the Willis. What the next video is going to entail is cleaning up the frame. And I've just got to get the uh, wire wheel and get in there and get that frame cleared up. There's so much pollen in the air right now. And what I want to do is clean the frame up, take everything off of it, and paint it all in within you know blow it off and paint it all within the same like video but there's so much pollen in the air <clears throat> as soon as i clean it off the pollen settles down on it so i need to wait until after a rainstorm to get out there clean it up and that way there won't be pollen in the air once i hit it with that chassis black paint so that's what's up that's why the willis jeep stuff is on hold for right now so much farm stuff going on so much mowing i've been bush hogging with the Ventrac and I'm going to do a comparison video my Woods Bush Hog versus the Ventrac mower the you're going to be totally surprised I mowed my pastures with the finish mower on the Bush Hog I've so far probably mowed about 20 acres of pasture with the finish mower and that Ventrac is covered with grass I've got to change the oil the first oil change is due on that thing so we got to get busy guys if you're not uh doing anything this weekend you want to come to Asheville North Carolina I uh, most likely will be up there tomorrow afternoon um, Mrs. Stony Ridge is gonna stick around the house here We've got some friends coming in from out of town she's gonna to be staying here while I run up there and visit folks at the Mother Earth News Fair so thanks a lot we'll see you guys soon here on the Stony Ridge farm greasing the vent track is a pain it's not too bad there's one grease fitting way down in the middle uh, we may show you guys how to service that vent track at some point so it's good stuff Thanks a lot, guys. We'll see you next time on the Stony Ridge Farm Vlog. I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed a little bit of reality check. This is real. This is true. This is the information that you need to know. This is why we live in a $3,500 house while we're building our farm, because we want to get our land paid for. We want to build our infrastructure. We want to get a farm operation up and running before we go to building our house. That's it. We want to start making a tiny bit of money, at least start seeing some turnaround. Cool.